Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Arlington Board of Selectmen's meeting for Monday, May 19th, 2014. It is 7 p.m. and I call this meeting to order. Uh, I'd like to remind everyone that this is being broadcasted by ACMI, um, so you can view it later if you would like. Um, to begin, uh, for approval, the consent agenda requests three one-day beer and wine licenses, uh, 6614, 6714, 6814, uh, Appleton Place between Mass Ave and Burton Street, designated one way along the closing of Acton Place. Request contractor drain layer license for approval 16th annual Feast of the East for Saturday, June 14th. I move approval subject to all conditions as set forth. Second. Do we have any discussion on any of these items in the consent agenda? Come on up. Good. I'm Nicholas Croquettos from St. Athanasius Greek Orthodox Church. Not to be confused with Father Nicholas Castanas, who's on the, the letter, but I'm the chairman of facilities and if you have any questions for us, once again, it's our 50th year, so just as a reminder, but not the 50th year for the festival. The festival started late 70s, so I guess with your consent, we'd love to uh, have our festival beer and wine license. We'll be meeting with the planning department, and we would love to see all of you there as well. Great, no, I, I do love that feast. Um, you try your best. <laughs> great food. <laughs> Thank um, you. Any, any further discussion? Yeah, thank you. I, I love it too, and we try to make it up every year. Um, I, I just did want to note that th the things that we're approving um, tonight, uh, assuming we vote to do so, are, are the uh, beer and wine license and the closure of the temporary closure of the street. That the, I think you know that the use of the field is, goes through the. Uh, Correct. It's never quite cl clear if it's the school or the park and rec, but uh, it doesn't go through here at any, rate, at any rate. And there is a park and rec commissioner here who perhaps could, uh, could help you with that too, Ms. Rothmer. I think they have spoken to Tim Ruggieri and they're gonna work with Parks and Recreation with the whole park yeah, request. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm gonna work with the building department, so. Great. For the tents and whatnot, so. Great, yeah. great. Um, do we have any further discussion? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, three nothing. Moving on, for approval, inaugural Moonlight Beach Party to support Arlington's Arlington Parks Alliance in one day beer and wine license for July 26. Uh, Joe Connolly and Jennifer Rothenberg. Good evening, I'm Jen Rothenberg, Parks and Recreation Commissioner. Mr. Connolly couldn't be here this evening. Um, so as uh, you can see in your packets, this is a one-day event. Uh, it's a fundraiser for the parks and playgrounds in town. Uh, we are hoping to raise community awareness and uh, bring various parts of the community together, users groups, uh, friends groups, and um, it'll be a really fun event. So we hope you can all be there. It looks like it. Do we have any questions from the board? Um, Arlington Park Alliance, do you want to give a little pu plug for that? Um, I'm not recalling exactly in my head what it is, so. So the Arlington Parks Alliance, we have, uh, it has been renamed from the Friends of Parks. It is a, a sort of a subgroup of the um, Park and Recreation Commission. Uh, it is a group that has been meeting for many years now, uh, mostly Friends groups that have been coming and We've been meeting on a regular basis, basically to discuss uh, issues in parks, trying to figure out ways that the friends groups can all support one another, work on larger issues together as a group. Um, we have tried to do some fundraising efforts in the past, but they haven't been very successful. So we decided to change the name of the group mm. as a way to uh, help us promote our mission and try to raise awareness that way. So with the new name and this big event, we're hoping that uh, we will be able to get more people involved and active in the community. And hopefully there'll be some new friends groups that will pop up over time. Right, that'd be great. Is there a website or is it just Joe Conley over at REC? Uh, we're cre in the midst of creating oh. a website right now, a Facebook page, oh. um, and we're gonna be doing some publicity provided our event is approved, we'll be able to move forward. Thank you. I move approval subject to all conditions as set forth. Second. 
Oh, thank you. Um, no, this looks like a great event. Thanks for bringing it forward. Uh, we have a motion in a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Good news. Moving on, we have an introduction for our newly appointed Arlington Cultural Council member, Mr. Boudreau. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. How are you? Can uh, just introduce yourself a little? Say a few words? I know Jeff you Boudreau. I live on Bow Street. And I'm. thank you for your indulgence. I was triple booked last Monday night <laughs> here it's a busy town time meeting here. and with the uh, Cultural Council had a meeting scheduled for that night as well. I actually started uh, doing arts work in Arlington about 2008 and 2009. I was not a resident of the town at the time. I produced several concerts at the Park Avenue Congregational Church. And since then, I've been producing about 125 not-for-profit concerts in Boston and the greater Boston area. Hope to bring them to uh, Arlington myself someday. but. Uh, I uh, would like to uh, help the uh, Cultural Council spend Mass Cultural Council money wisely <laughs> and promote arts in general in Arlington. Okay, thank you very much. Do we have any questions from the board? No, I spoke to Mr. Boudreau at town meeting. I'm very happy that you've stepped up and are uh, offering your services to the town. I, I think we already. I think we, we already. Uh, we already appointed you. So Great. congratulations. Yes, and uh, no. Thank you. It's an exciting time for arts in Arlington. I mm -hmm. think, and I um, look forward to your work expanding it. Thanks thank you very much. Thank you. Moving on. Request common victual license. Uh, Jian Ming Lin um, for the Great Walk. Please come forward. Good evening. Uh, my name is Chris Farnsworth, counsel for Mr. Lin. Uh, Mr. Lin is here as well. However, his English is not terribly good. My mother-in-law, Miss uh, Chu Hoi Tao, is here to help me with translation, should it be necessary. Thank you. Please just say a little bit about your uh, proposal. Sure. Uh, so Mr. Lin is going to buy the, or is buying the Great Walk on 1181 Mass Ave. Uh, no changes are being made to the restaurant. Everything's going to be exactly the same. Uh, it's my understanding that the current owner has some uh, family issues, which is why he's selling. Great. Any questions from the board? I just, just quickly, I just if you could refresh my memory, if I'm not mistaken, this this is the second change of ownership in about a year or two. Is that? Correct. That's correct. That's correct. correct. Yeah. The, as I mentioned, the, the current owner uh, did buy it last year, but some family issues popped up. So. Okay. Great. And, and I wonder if Mr. Um, Lynn, or if you could just speak briefly about the, you know previous experience in, in the restaurant. Sure. Uh, uh, Mr. Lynn has owned a restaurant called I think at the uh, the China King. It's, it's in Salem. There's a restaurant King. in Salem, Hong Kong King. Excuse me. Uh, in Salem uh, for several years, and his wife is going to take over that restaurant while he manages the restaurant here. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Yes. Just two questions. I just want to make sure. Um, in your application, uh, there's a request for every day of the week except for Tuesday. Was, was that intentional? Are they going to be closed on Tuesday? Uh, I don't believe so. That, that may have been a uh, mistake. I have hours of operation Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, 11 a to 10 p. Friday, Saturday, 11 a to 11 p, and Sunday, 2 p to 10 p. Oh, yeah. Is that something we can change administratively? Do, do they want to close on Tuesday, or do they want to be open? Excuse me, one more. Okay. Am I reading that right? I know you, you are. are. It's yes. a good catch, yeah. yeah. I just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, if they want to be open, they can. I'm not. I'm just. Oh no, to... that that that's a mistake. They they are going to be open on Tuesday, so okay. that is a mistake in the application. All right. So they want um, for Tuesday, <clears throat> they want the 11a to 10p. Yes, please. Okay, um, Doug, is that okay to uh, do right here? If you guys are going to vote on it with the understanding that it'll be open on Tuesday, I think we can make an administrative change to the license right application right here and take that vote. I'm happy to yeah, do I'm that. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Yep. Yeah. And just one personal question. Just we, I'm like, sorry. One, oh. one thing that I should make clear, though, is you should make sure that uh, any application for the license with the ABCC isn't, doesn't have a similar error. 
Okay. Uh, there is no application, but thank you. I, I and I just wanted to ask, it's not a requirement, but um, I went through the menu real quick. Will they have chicken chow foam? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. My family loves chicken chow phone, and I can't, there's only like one other place in Arlington, but it's not on the menu. Mm -hmm. okay. I will, uh, he will now, so. <laughs> you, Condition your, of no, approval. It's your, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's his business plan, his restaurant, his menu, it's just, I figured I'd put a pitch in for it, because there's only one other place in Arlington that has it. So. As Julie noted, thank you. Okay, but thank it's you. not a requirement. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you. Do we have a motion and a second? Uh, I move approval subject to all conditions as set forth. And the yep. amendment. Second. Yes. Do we have any further discussion from the crowd? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, we have a request for an outside furniture permit. Mr. Mond from Retro Burger. Hey, Dan. Good evening. Sorry, I'm late. Hello. Hello. Hello, board. Long time no see. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Could I, you just run through your proposal quickly for us? Sure. Uh, yeah, we, we just would like to put a couple of benches um, right outside in, the, in front of the store. Now with the nice weather for people to sit outside for ice cream or if they're waiting for takeout orders, just, you know, something very simple. Great, thank you. Um, any discussion for the board? Any questions? I think it's a great idea. I move approval subject to all conditions as set forth. <laughs> second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, I also think it's a great idea. Thank you. I, Thank um, you. Ex every time my I idea drive. For the <laughs> <laughs> Since we think, no. I made her do all the work. <laughs> we'll give her a credit for the implementation, oh, okay. though, right? <laughs> uh, first of all, I apologize to my colleagues for being late, and to everyone here, I apologize for uh, um, being uh, for not being on time. Uh, I really liked it, and I just know that some people at home are wondering about how it look, how it's going to end up looking, and, I, and about passage on the sidewalk, which you guys explained very well in the written materials, that there are going to be benches kind of up against your wall, and you're not actually right. even putting tables out, no. so there's still a lot of room there for people to walk by, and so I, that's why I'm, I'm absolutely delighted to, to support thank you. it. Yeah. yeah, we should have a, a, I measured, so how, like with the drawings. We'll have in excess yeah. of six feet still. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Do we have any discussion from the crowd? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Moving on, we have a request for an all alcohol package store change for um, Mr. Weissman. Good evening. Uh, so we're just looking to change the name uh, from the Meat House uh, to Prime Your Local Butcher. Uh, we're uh, in the process of being independent of the Meat House as an independent uh, company. So that's why the request for the, for the name change as it relates to the uh, liquor license. So just just to be clear, sure. the Arlington location will be its own standalone independent entity or it's a smaller subsection of the uh, independent from the meat house you said yeah we're currently a franchise owner so yeah. we would no longer be a franchise owner would be an independent okay in Arlington which is what we kind of wanted to do for the last couple of years okay. Okay. I just wanted to be clear then so some of the stuff that so when we awarded the license a couple of years ago um, part of the proposal included you know support from the meat house central about how you're going to uh, enforce and uh, uh, do you have plans on how you're going to replace the elements of support that they were doing for in terms of um, maintaining training and stuff like that for serving or excuse me for selling alcohol absolutely yeah i mean we still have those train the training manuals th those are still ours because we developed those independently of the meat house um so everything as far as you know uh proper carding how you know our hours of operation when we can serve those are still in enforce our general manager is you know we've had the same assistant managers general managers in place since we opened so you know we, there's continuity in terms of what we're doing and just to piggyback on that and i think you answered the question but besides 
the name change and disenfranchising yourself from the meat right. house, um, recognizing normal workforce um, turnover, um, you anticipate having basically the same employees that you have now. A absolutely, okay. absolutely. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Dunn. Move approval subject to conditions. Second. We have a motion to second. Do we have any other discussion from the crowd? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Good Thank luck. You. Thanks. So long as you still sell pigs. <laughs> <laughs> On traffic rules and orders, um, we have a request for one space on street overnight parking at 44 River Street. Uh, Ms. Connolly. Good evening. Um, as you know, I've made a request for on street parking. I have lived in Arlington for 50 years and I never had to ask for something. As it is, I took away my yard, my garden in the back to make another spot for a car because we go in like a train. And I've tried very hard. I have a granddaughter. If I rumble on, excuse me, I get nervous. Um, who came to live with me, to give me a hand in I appreciate all her efforts because she's trying to go to school and work and help me. But getting tickets <laughs> isn't helping any one of us. I'm in a poor financial situation as she is. But um, I did, there was a neighbor that helped us out at the beginning and she let Kristen park in her driveway. Then about um, maybe Three months ago, she says her nephew came back, and of course, the nephew had privilege over Kristen. So then we went across the street to Regis Road, which is a private way. And I did talk to the neighbor on the corner, because she just moved in, and I explained the situation I had in my house. So she says that would be fine, and of course, one night, Kristen parked too close to the corner. And I guess that upset her because she says her dogs, it causes her dogs to bark. She has two little, I call them yippers. <laughs> I really don't know what kind they are, but they make a lot of racket. So she got irritated by that. And I think that was the night Officer Jessica came home and she too came around the corner and says, gee, if a fire truck or an ambulance had it. So I corrected my granddaughter, but either way, that was the end of um, parking on there. And I did go up to the police station and I spoke with Officer Kelly. And he says, as long as you don't block anyone's driveway or park in front of a hydrant or be a hindrance to anyone, you're fine. So Kristen started parking again. And lo and behold, we get these letters left on the car. So now she gets scared. Neither one of us want to see a tow charge. And I called the station again, and the officer said, um, Officer Kelly probably didn't realize it, but being a private way, they could call a tow truck. I'm not sure on all the rules. I've never had this problem. And I do need my granddaughter. And I don't know where to take space from anymore. And, you must all know it's hard. I mean, it's not like years ago, you were lucky if we had one car in the family. Now we've got four, five, six cars in the family. And um, I just get into the, I hate to say it, I never thought I was gonna get older and need help. And right about now, I'm in the stage, I need help. And, and I look, got another ticket again too. And um, I really need some form of permit to have Kristen Park in front of my house. I mean, she gets up early in the morning to go to school. And then, you know, she tried rushing back 
she's trying to do everything she can. And um, it's the parking situation. Believe me, I've been here 50 years. Mm. I guess I'm probably going to go <laughs> right here, too. But um, I do need some help with the parking, really. Okay. And Thank it's you. really a hassle. I have tried neighbors. I have tried parking. And like I said, we just rode, but all of a sudden, somebody is leaving notes. I don't know who. So there's no one you can particularly blame, because uh, I've tried to talk with them. And I t talked with a gentleman, Henry, who lives on Regis Road, and he says, I would never, ever do that to you. And I would not leave a note. Mm -hmm. So I don't know which way to turn, and um, I do need some help. And that's why I've come to you people. Thank you. Um, do we have some questions from the board? Any comments? Mr. Dunn. I just wanted to so you do have a driveway? I do. And I told you I took away part of the garden so our cars could get in there. And, or so, else and then how many spaces there. are in it? Pardon? How many spaces are in the driveway? There's five. Okay. okay. There's no way to squeeze a sixth. <laughs> no way. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mrs. Mahan raised her hand. Um, you did a great job. So <laughs> for your first time speaking in 50 years uh, in front of a board. Um, and I definitely sympathize with, with your plight because we hear this from a lot of people. Um, we, but we did have um, a question on the ballot. The town strictly wants to stand behind overnight parking. Um, however, and we do have police and fire that have objections to this. I do know a lot of the residents um, on Regis and University Ave, and it is a private way. And what it is is whoever 14 Regis Road owns that space in front of 14 Regis Road. I, I would be happy to work with you and contact those neighbors. Um, I, I know one gentleman who owns three houses. He lives down there with his wife. Um, whether it's a driveway, as long as you have permission from the private way owner and only park in front of their house. Right, that's um, fine. And so um, we do have a recommendation to not approve the on-street parking because the town has solidly said we want to keep the ban on overnight parking, but I don't want to send you away saying, so go off and try to figure something else out. Um, and, and I understand you, you did everything you could to get five cars in there. Um, but I, I will personally make sure I make some phone calls tomorrow. Um, and I also know another neighbor who lives down on Dartmouth Street. And I used to live on Cornell. God bless you, Milo. Um, and I'll be happy to contact any one of them because I, I do want to help you out. Um, but um, I would, would make the motion just on the recommendation of police and fire um, of no action. Um, but I really feel confident that I think I can find you somewhere nearby that they'll give you permission. It would be greatly appreciated because I have tried and... Um no success, you know, and um, I just don't know what else to do. I will, and, um, it, you know, I'll make sure Marie has all her, con uh, barring okay. what anybody else on the board wants to do, because um, mm -hmm. um, I just can anticipate everybody on River Street and, you know, some of the other streets, Summer Street, things like that. Um, but I re I'm not just saying this to say it from the microphone. I really do know a lot of people down there. We have a town meeting member, both Marie and I know very well, um, so I'll make sure I get your information and get in touch with you and find somewhere for Kristen. I think you were granddaughter. Okay. For the time being, can we do something just so we don't get these $25 tickets? Because we never thought I'd have a fixed income. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm in that predicament. Um, I mean, what you could do perhaps is speak with the um, town treasurer and see if in the interim, if you can park over at Thompson School and, and maybe he'd do a, what's the word, not ad hoc. Oh. Per diem. What is it? Per diem. Per diem, because mm -hmm. um, I think it's a dollar a night yeah, or something like that. So you might want to explore that. And if you call the selectman's office tomorrow, they can get you the information on that. Because okay. I'm hoping to get this resolved within a week or two. Not All right. Talking. That that would be fine. And, and if you want, you can contact Mrs. Skopelk or Marie tomorrow. And yes, she can, I will. You know, tell you all the stuff again, and I will follow up. But all of us will follow up on this. Okay, I. But that would be my motion. Any second? We have a motion and a second. Um, any further discussion? Yes. Uh, just that I, I, I agree with, I, with Mrs. Mahan that uh, for both 
because of the recommendation from both of our public safety departments, plus uh, the, um, the precedent of River Street, because there really is no way to be off River Street. You really are on the road when you park there. But I do think that we can't, that there's no, we, we don't have a lot of leeway here to, to permit it. But I do think there are other ways around it. And I think that, uh, I definitely think that Thompson School should really be an option for you because that isn't too far from where you are and there's a, a fair amount of parking down there. I know, it's just that right now, financially, yeah. she doesn't have it. She's going to school and... Yeah, but I, I, I definitely understand, but we'd also, if we did that, we'd have, uh, you know, then we would have parking on River Street and clearly the town doesn't want that. You know, uh, but somewhere along the way, isn't the town going to think about where are these cars going to go? I mean, the families are getting larger, and children are coming back home to their parents. <laughs> I, I, I share your opinion, and that's the way I voted on the ballot. However, it was I, that's how I voted when it was on the ballot a year, a year and a half ago. But uh, I did not win, so th that's where we are. I, I think I, I think it's yeah. all been said. So, and I, I'll make yeah. sure that um, through Mrs. Kropelka um, that the full board as well as the town manager sees what the resolution to this is because they're, they're going to want to make sure we all follow up to it. All right. No, I, um, <clears throat> well, thanks again for coming. And I do, uh, I do know that this is not an easy issue. Um, but I think my colleagues have stated it um, pretty fairly that uh, I think our hands are tied in situations like this because it's not – you know, we, we can't just make a decision based off, um, or at least how I feel, off, you know, one set of circumstances, because we do then set a precedent that others would, you know, expect us to follow. So I, um, I am sorry that we couldn't be more amenable to you tonight, but I hope that we do find a resolution moving forward. Okay, that'll be fine. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we have a motion okay. of... No action and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Moving forward, uh, for approval, Arlington Public Art, we have um, the annual, now annual, Cheerful Where You Sit exhibition from July 18th to July 20th, and a Transformer box mural project painting. Uh, Ms. Arch and Ms. Manka. Thank you so much. And we want to thank uh, the Board of Selectmen and the Town Manager and everybody who's been so supportive of all of our efforts. And um, Art Rocks Monotomy is a huge success, and we're moving forward and bigger and better. So we we're just asking your approval for another shuffle where you sit. This year it is going to be just three days long in front of the Dallin Museum at the Whittemore Park and we just want to ask permission to um, do that there. And then Jill's gonna uh, tell you a little bit more about the Transformer Box Mural Project. Thank you. I move. I'm Jill, I'm a resident Don't. of Arlington and also part of Arlington Public Art. And um, we did get a, a, a grant from the Cultural Council of Arlington and Massachusetts for this project. We have selected some artists and um, we would like to go ahead with this project during this summer. And five of the transformer boxes have been chosen in the Arlington Center area. And if you would like to look, I can circulate this. Great, is this the same as what you have? Um, it's, it's the same. Yeah. Yeah. And hold them up to the camera, maybe. Yeah. Although, maybe, <laughs> maybe there's no, a, I, a website. Maybe. They look beautiful. They do. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yes. Ms. On the Transformer project, um, is there a specific approval you're looking for us from tonight, or just general um, that we think that it's a good idea? Or is there a specific? So, I understand a specific request for Chairful where you sit. Is there a specific request for Transformer, or is it more informational? Uh, more informational and okay. update, yeah. We actually have chosen the artists, so. We're ready to go ahead. Great. Ms. Warren. Um, congratulations on the success of the cheerful event. Um, I'm really pleased. I, I didn't imagine it was going to be quite as successful. You all probably predicted it, but um, <laughs> you're obviously doing something right. And I want to thank you for submitting um, for our informational purposes that the six des proposed designs. I just have just one question, just because each of them sort of have a theme. Yes. I was just wondering, the one that I'm going to call the milk, um, theme or cow theme is that 
um, particular design for that particular transformer? Is it there a reason for that? Is um, what I'm just thinking of is um, a business. There probably isn't any business nearby that that's going to be. In well, actually, there are some businesses. Um, it's going to be right next to Stop and Shop and across from oh. Blue Ribbon. Okay, so that makes oh. sense. <laughs> <laughs> and and that, my second question was, was that intentional or it just came yes, out that way? Okay, no, because that makes sense. I was, just, I was just thinking, like, say, not this case in point, there's a, you know, lactose intolerance support right. group and the transformers <laughs> there. Yeah. And that's the only reason I asked the question. And I'm, I don't mean to make light of it. I just wanted to, where that's really had a, a, a focus theme. Yes. I remember saying, I hope it's near a store, ice cream or something like that. So thank you. The or, theme in general was nature. We just asked for nature based oh. submissions. So we got a whole range. <laughs> did you get any high school students or were they all just? We did and we, we have did. one high school. Yeah, well, we, we have, have a graduate. I'm we sorry, have a um, high school student, um, but she's 18. She'll be um, painting it as an adult. We're saving the Arlington High School um, mural box for a time when um, they can get, they can submit a sketch and have it approved and, and paint that oh, perhaps great. next year. Beth, thank you so much for this. Thank you. Mr. Chaplin. Oh. Just very quickly, Adria, if we haven't done so already, are we going to coordinate with DPW on the box locations? Just to be sure that there's no uh, crossover of having an artist at the site when there's work to be done at the box or something like that? That's a good idea. Yeah, we, we can work together we can on that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, with all the utility work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Chaplin. Well, thank you very much. I think you know how much I value what, what you all do. Um, Last year, cheerful, we sit. My daughter and I had so much fun making our chair that this year, all four of my family members are going to be working on them, and we're having vigorous discussions at, at dinner and <clears throat> stealing one another's ideas and such. <laughs> so um, I'm very happy to su to support this. I did have one question on the transformers, though. Um, a couple months ago, the uh, Commission on Arts and Culture came in, and they had a kind of a boilerplate agreement for public art in the future, uh, you know, an understanding that's reached between the artists and the, and, the, and the hosts. Are you looking for us to reach those directly with the artists, or is Arlington Public Art going to be doing something along those lines? Art, we'll deal with that. We'll deal with that, okay, so that the expectations are there, that it, yes. there is the possibility that this is not permanent not or in perpetuity. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because I, I think it was a great model and we, we, we know that there have been misunderstandings before with the, yeah. <laughs> in the Heights, so. <laughs> okay, great, thank you. And I just wonder, Mr. Chair, are you looking for two separate votes or is one vote suffice um, on this? You know, well, it seems like we really only need a vote on the first one and the second's more of an approval. Okay. Um, anyway, so I think one vote is fine. Ms. Time? Yep, Sounds I agree. Good. So I would move approval for the uh, request on chair for where you sit. Second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion from anyone? I see none. Um, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you very much. Bye. Moving forward, um, presentation, the Arlington T.O. Cynthia? No, I think it's yeah. no, number nine. Oh, sorry, I already checked that one off by accident. For approval, the Summer Concert Series, July 19th, July 30th, and August 20th. Ms. Tripp. Hi, everybody. Hello. So um, they're going to bring art to the front of the Jefferson Cutter House, and we want to bring some music. Um, last year, we had two concerts. This year, we're going to add one more concert, so we'll have one per month. So same scenario, Wednesday night, Farmer's Market. Concerts at 6.30, about 7.30. Um, Karen Kane, the Jitterbugs are coming back. That was a big hit with the little kids. And Dave Marco is coming back at the end of July. And then we're adding Forever Fab, which is a Beatles tribute band in August. So, so I'm looking for approval to have the concert, um, those concerts. Great. So move approval. I think it's a great program. I'm really delighted you're doing it. Great. Right. Second. Yes, Ms. Oh, did, did I jump you? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, did you? I'm, I'm done. Oh, I just wanted to note that um, one thing, and I think, I think Jen is, is familiar with this, that, um, you know, that the Arlington Alive kind of branding for the town has been used in the, in the past for the block party and such. And I think, I, I know that um, ATED got the services of a, of a part-time um, kind of event uh, coordinator to kind of help with promotions around right, the block party and such. 
and uh, is going to be uh, promoting this, the libraries, concert series, and such, also under kind of under it's that, great. It's all that one banner place. too, to make sure that that, right. that it all gets out there and there's kind of a thematic um, uh, feel to the summer with with all these great events that the chamber's doing and some of the other organizations. So. Yep. And you were aware of that, I, I presume. I was aware of that, actually. It was, it was great to see everything together in one space. So if someone wants to see what's going on in Arlington, they just go to one spot and you can plan your whole summer. Cool. ArlingtonAliveMA.org. Yep. Yeah. Um, just on another, another matter, I know mm -hmm. Dave Samako um, is an Arlington resident. Yes, he is. The other two bands that you have, are they also? I'm, I'm just curious. Karen is. Karen is? Forever Fab is not, but they've done concerts for... Belmont, Lexington. They called us. Can we please come? So, we'll give them a shot. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, we'll just put, maybe keep them in mind. Or uh, I'm just thinking, Town Day. We're going to implement a, a different. Oh sure. Thing and this actually, year. Um, um, so I'll what, make it a point to make it down. Oh. And <coughs> oh, you have Karen. K yeah, they already have Karen K for Town Day. You, oh, she's already up there. All she's right, a big so, hit. Right, that, that kills we that we extra. booked her. We booked her the day after the concert. I was oh, like, nice. just put us down for next year because okay. it's so much fun. All right. Excellent. Do we Thank have you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Thank you. And you're all invited to the multi-chamber event Wednesday night at Brightview, 5.30 to 7.30. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. I think it speaks wonders saying that people are calling us to want to come here. <laughs> that cool. yep. And now our whole summer is packed. Um, Moving on, uh, presentation, Arlington Teosente Sister City Project. Well, I don't see Mr. A. So maybe we should move table. I move postpone, I guess, until either yeah. in the future meeting or appearance. Sounds good. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Four nothing vote. Moving on, Tritown Bikeway Report, invitation to meeting, Mr. Chaplain. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So earlier this year, representatives from the planning department came and spoke with the board, and uh, I believe also representatives from ABAC came and spoke with the board about the tool design groups uh, navigating the Minuteman uh, draft report. So that draft is now a draft final, about to be finalized, and they are having a meeting in Lexington on May 28th at 2 p.m., and have asked uh, the boards uh, of each of the towns, Bedford, uh, Lexington and Arlington to send a representative. So uh, I wanted to use this opportunity uh, on the agenda for the board to hopefully designate uh, an interested and available board member to attend, but also to make sure that the public's aware that this process is moving forward. This report will be issued uh, and that, you know, Arlington's going to have a seat at the table to make sure that the recommendations are, are uh, something that Arlington's comfortable with. Thank you. Um, yes, ma'am. If, if he's willing, it seems to sort of be up his avenue, if, um, Mr. Kiro, if I could nominate him. Uh, is this something you? I think I can swing it. Yep. Is that is that okay? I don't yep. need to put yep. you. Yep. I think okay, I can so swing I'm it. I think I can swing it. Mr. Kiro. Um, Mr. Kiro, is that okay with you? <laughs> that, that, that's that's fine. I was I was actually happy to join the uh, bicycle advisory committee on their community ride yesterday. Great. So this would be a nice continuity. Perhaps <laughs> you'll nice ride your continuity. bike up to the meeting. Um, <laughs> perhaps not if I'm at works. But that's <laughs> two, two wheels, one stone. No. That that location is actually right on the bike path. It is. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I might be able to. Yeah. No pressure. <laughs> no, if we, I work we from home, I'll work it. We, we won't be there to check on it. <laughs> um, Look, my boss doesn't live in Arlington anymore. <laughs> uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, that sounds great. Now, we have. Is, we, will we take a vote on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we, uh, did we have a second? Post a second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Thank you, Mr. Kira. Yep. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Moving on, update, East Arlington Mass Ave rebuilt. Mr. Chaplain. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, I wanted to take an opportunity at the meeting tonight to inform the board about the latest information in regards to the East Arlington Mass Ave rebuild project, uh, as well as some of the public meetings and pub uh, information for public interest uh, that's become available and that we're starting to push out to the public today. So I, I think the first thing I want to mention is we've had some talks here before uh, about trying to get uh, a dedicated public information liaison as part of this project. Uh, something uh, conceptually modeled after the designated town representative that's been quite the success of the Sims project. 
So uh, through working with Senator Donnelly's office and MassDOT, MassDOT did include money in the contract, in the budget, for this public information specialist. So they, uh, MassDOT has an existing contractual relationship with Howard Stein Hudson, who is a design and engineering firm. You might have heard that name. They're actually the engineers working on our Arlington, uh, Arlington Center Safe Travel Project. <clears throat> they have someone on staff who is a dedicated public liaison. His name's uh, Nate Cabral Curtis, and he's been assigned to the Arlington Project. So we've had an opportunity to meet with him internally. He started to work with uh, Joan Roman, our PIO, on public information materials, and he will be a direct contact with Wayne Schwernard, our town engineer, during the course of the project. And throughout um, <clears throat> the course of the project, he's going to be available directly to answer resident and business inquiries uh, and connect with MassDOT and liaise back and forth to try to resolve issues. So I, I think it's important to uh, state that very clearly, the, the commitment that MassDOT has to making this a successful project and reducing the impacts that will occur to, to residents and businesses while construction happens. Moving on from that, um, I wanted to just mention a few other key points. Uh, J.H. Lynch & Sons has been awarded the contract by MassDOT. They will be the contractor. The town at a pre-construction meeting and then a follow-up meeting has had the opportunity uh, to meet with this contractor and, and have some preliminary conversations. Um, and then I wanted to run down just uh, some key dates that we know now uh, building up to our communication plan. So uh, today is a key date. MassDOT officially issued a press release in regards to the kickoff of this project. We'll be putting that press release uh, on the town's website and issuing it via the town notices. Starting tomorrow, um, Ted Fields, the economic development planner, along with Nate Cabral Curtis uh, from Howard Stein Hudson, will begin going door to door, dropping uh, a copy of the flyer that you had in your packet tonight to mm -hmm. all the butters on the project. So all the way down uh, the portion of Mass Ave affected by the project and a little bit back on each of the side streets, dropping off that flyer. Uh, focusing in on um, you know, businesses who have had a particular interest in wanting you know, to be communicative in the project. Uh, we won't have Nate for the entire drop, but he will be there uh, for a good portion of the drop with Ted. And we plan to get that done over the course of Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of this week. Then on Thursday, we're going to issue a town-wide Arlington Alert, the phone call system, so that every resident uh, receives a phone call in regards to uh, the information that I'm going to talk about tonight and key ways to get information to sign up for uh, the online email list, check the town's website. Uh, leading up to, uh, I'm gonna, I'll skip ahead, uh, a public information meeting on June 16th at the Thompson School in the gymatorium. It's a new word, I guess. Um, so <clears throat> that's going to be a key meeting with MassDOT, uh, this public liaison, Nate Cabral Curtis, uh, as well as town staff there to talk about uh, the construction rollout, construction schedule, and what the initial impacts will be. Uh, rolling back a little bit, on May 27th, Folks living in the area or anybody traveling through the area is going to start to see signs and some other pre-construction activity uh, beginning uh, to be visible down in the area. And on June 9th, uh, at the board's meeting, we're going to have Nate from Howard Stein Hudson come to meet the board so we can get a face-to-face -face interaction. We would have had him here tonight, but he was uh, working on another project, so he wasn't available. Um, going on from that, uh, the only other thing I, I don't believe I mentioned is we have had established some time ago and will continue to reiterate in our public communications the establishment of an email notification list. Uh, that will encourage residents and others to uh, subscribe to so that we can have uh, you know, constant communication, guide people back to the website for project updates. And then once we get into construction, what we'll continually have is a three-week look-ahead schedule that will really inform us as to what, you know, or as closely as possible inform us as to what's going to happen for the next three weeks in terms mm -hmm. of construction. You know, where might there be some parking limitations? Where are the construction trucks going to be? Uh, and that will be, I think, very valuable to residents and businesses, especially businesses as they're planning their operations, their events, um, and special uh, you know, events they might be having. Uh, so MassDOT has been very committed to that. Uh, we're going to use every communication tool we have uh, available. We're going to use variable message boards, uh, you know, the big um, light-up boards that we have uh, to, to tell people you know, business is open or warn people about detours, warn people about parking. Uh, we are going to have construction signs that remind people that business is open, uh, support local businesses during construction. Uh, so we're really going to use uh, the full gamut of multimedia uh, opportunities. So uh, with that, I guess the last thing I'll say is we've also had an open dialogue uh, with members of the Capital Square Business Association. They've made uh, a number of their concerns known to us, and we're going to be working with the contractor and with MassDOT to make sure as many of those concerns uh, that can be addressed are addressed. Uh, we, we all have a common understanding that there's a balance between accommodation and slowing down the project. And the com that leads to a common understanding of the sooner the project's done, the 
happy, uh, the faster that everybody's happy that it's done and, and, there are, and construction equipment's out of the area. Uh, so that'll be a constant balance throughout the project. Uh, but with that said, um, I think we're excited to get the project started. Uh, we feel good about our, uh, the outreach and partnership with MassDOT, and I'm happy to answer any questions that the board might have. Thanks. Um, just quickly, if you don't mm. mind, I, um, I'm really happy to hear this. Thank you, Mr. Chaplain. I think that this communication plan is just as important <coughs> as the shovels in the ground. Um, you know, this has been a long time coming, and um, I really like all the steps, especially that three-week plan ahead period. Um, and I look forward to meeting um, Mr. Curtis. I, um, uh, I think this is a, a really good strategy and one that will lead to a successful project. Um, colleagues, Ms. Mahan. I just have a few questions and comments. Yeah. I am too am thrilled because <laughs> I can't recall when a week has gone by that someone hasn't asked me whatever happened when to that project. Start. Um, and, and I want to commend the town manager on um, the action plan that you've implemented. Thank you. I, I do have a few questions. Some of them are around the contract, so I don't anticipate that you'll have the answers. Um, regarding the J contract group chair, the contract with J.H. Lynch, yep. I see that um, from MassDOT we receive correspondence that they're uh, putting a project in, in their bid proposal put the uh, number of 610 days. I'd just be curious when that time starts clicking. Um, I know yep. everything was released February 14th of this year, but I assume it's not February 14th. The reason I ask that is I, I want to, you know, wor work out and come back. Uh, so my follow-up question to that would be um, what I'm thinking Forest Street, that was supposed to be a nine-month project and it turned into five years, and that was through the state, and the town really had to hold the state's contractors feet to the fire because um, there were a lot of issues yep. with that. So the reason I asked that, my follow-up question to that would be, what is the contingency plan if we, we go beyond the 610 days? When will the town be notified? Do we want to give them, um, you know, this is when you should notify us, barring any emergency circumstance and things that come up. Um, the other thing that I know is in the documents over at MassDOT, I don't know that I'll get up there. Um, I'd just be curious what their plan, if, what if any nighttime work um, they, they, they might be vis-a-vis -vis what is the process for that. I would anticipate they contact the town yeah. manager and or police and fire, but if, if we could just ask that question, as well as I just want to make sure, and I'm sure they'll hear this either May 27th or the June 6th or 16th meeting, um, and Mr. Kiro can correct me on this if, I, if things have changed, but I know Hardy School implemented a program just in the morning time where they use a specific area of Mass Ave to drop the kids off? Are they still doing that? I, I think so, that, yeah. I, um, think so. I thought they only did that when Thompson was under construction. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think you're we can, right. We can look into check that. On that? Yeah. And then if that is still the case, um, make sure everybody's we'll aware of that. that. Yeah. Then, um, and, and I really want to um, try to avoid the Forest Street fiasco in terms of how, how long it turned into. So whatever mm -hmm. contingency plans you can put in on that. And regarding, um, and thank you to my colleagues for letting me <laughs> go first. Um, just to put before you, is there any way we can get this information sheet to town meeting members, whether we mail it or put it on the moderator list? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just so they yeah. have it, because really, people are really starting to get aware of town meeting and town government, and I think it would be a useful tool for them, um, as well as if we, um, whatever way through the chair that um, Mr. Chapelain thinks appropriate, maybe even send a copy to the school committee or superintendent if we haven't already, just so if she may want to, or individual principals yeah. may want to, if, if we could make the request, if that's an appropriate thing, just as an FYI. I mean, if you could work, I guess, with Dr. Bodie, um, at the very least, have the school committee get copies of it, and or if she thinks it's appropriate to go in, either her mailing list, or, and I know the individual principals have one. Just as you're yeah, doing. Yeah, no, I don't, the pool cannot be too big. Exactly, I, I think getting exactly. It out there with is, safe is groups and things like that. So, but I, I don't want any, the length of my <laughs> comments to, to be anything but, this, this is a fantastic plan that you have in place, and it was one of the questions during the campaign trail. Um, it, and we assured them that we will be doing everything we can, and, and I want to thank you, Adam, um, for following up on the campaign promise that myself, Dan, and Mr. Uh, Tosi made. Sorry. Yeah, okay. That's it. You're welcome. Can, can I quickly respond to just a few? Um, Please. The, the 610 days, I'll confirm that. My guess would be it would start ticking when the notice to proceed is issued, so right around now, so I'll verify that with you. 
Uh, for nighttime work, it definitely has to be approved by the town. Okay. Uh, but there will be uh, there will be a couple instances where they're expecting to be approved, mostly the paving, mm -hmm. uh, to minimize impacts and to make sure the pavement sets. But I can get more information. And I'm concerned on that. about the grinding operations. I don't know if that's yep. mm -hmm. correct. But I know we had a nightmare over by. Yeah. Yeah. So th sorry. Yeah. Go we ahead. can ver I can verify that. Thank you. All right. That's oh, all. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kira. Thank you very much. I mean, I also I appreciate the work on this. I also I, I appreciate that you're you're learning from some of the lessons of um, of Sims on this. You know, Mr. Byrne, uh, you know, mentioned the three week look aheads. That was something that was regular up at yep. the Sims, uh, putting out the three week look aheads on the projects, and I think it helped to set expectations um, and, and the use of the liaison. But I will say that one of the keys to the success of um, the liaison, at least in the Sims situation, was high availability. So if we do have a situation where there's nighttime work or such, I, I don't know if you have a sense of what the service level agreement is with the liaison, but will the liaison be available at, at any hours that work is going on? Because I could, I could envision a situation where there is suddenly night work that somebody wasn't expecting and they're gonna be looking for somebody to to uh, to call. And do you, do you know if um, so this liaison it, is it, gonna be expected? It's not gonna, it's not gonna be that not going to be 24-7 availability yeah. and I can assure you there will be no surprise night work uh, okay. you know, we will make sure that any large-scale network is very well noticed uh, with, with adv very much advanced uh, approval which doesn't mean someone might not be surprised by it uh, right. but there won't be any night work that we as a town uh, would be surprised okay. by. okay thank you and the only other thing I'd mention is I'm glad you're reaching out to the Capital Square Business Association I know that you and I got caught on some uh, correspondence that went through uh, some of the ATED members from uh, Jan over at um, Capitol Square. And they're trying to put together special uh, promotional informational material for the businesses there to let people know that they'll still be open for business. They were looking for a particular type of map. And I know that I had sent it on to Mr. Karowski and Mr. Fields. And within about 10 minutes, we had two dueling maps and she had exactly what she needed. Good. So Good. I think the responsiveness, j just on a small example such as that to, um, be available so that, that, uh, that the merchants down there can also uh, get the word out that they're, they'll still be open for business was very important. Um, I think it's great. I think you've got a lot of detail and a lot of thought in it. And I, um, in the, I know that we're going to all feel some pain through this, whether we know about it in advance or not. And um, I think that if we work together, we're going to end up with an excellent project. Thank you. I should reiterate too, uh, the team from DPW and planning and MassDOT uh, and Joan Roman, the PIO, they have just been exceptional in putting together this detail and really thinking through all the different possibilities and taking, you know, a piece of information from here, a question from here and trying to think through all the possibilities. And, and it won't be perfect and we'll, we'll adjust as we go, but uh, the team has really done a great job pulling it together. Thank you very much. Thank no. you. No. Um, Move receipt. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Four nothing. <coughs> Moving on, uh, 1207 Mass Ave Working Group. Let Mr. Chaplain kick this off. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just wanted to provide a very brief update uh, as an agenda item on uh, last week's special meeting and then working group meeting to discuss 1207 Mass Ave, uh, the DAV. Uh, so as uh, the board knows, we had a special meeting uh, last Thursday morning. We toured the facility uh, with several board members for about uh, 20 minutes to half an hour uh, just to, to assess the facility size, um, uh, condition and whatnot, uh, met some of the members of, of the DAV. Uh, following that, we had a meeting between uh, the two board members who were appointed to the working group along with uh, myself, town council, and Bill McCarthy, the f uh, former veterans agent. Uh, what we laid out is that town council will be performing some further research uh, into the op options that are available for testing what potential private interest might be in the building without actually going out uh, to formal bids. So we'll be looking at that. I myself am going to be working on a chart to demonstrate the different paths we could take, whether it would be a town use path, a lease path, or a potential sale path for the building. Uh, and then the working group's gonna come back together to meet on June 9th uh, to discuss those options, uh, move the issue forward, and decide whether or not at that point we're ready to come back to the board to make some recommendations. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to share one of the comments I made at that uh, working group meeting, which is that I think it is, uh, one of the th things that I think is really important is that we have uh, 
an opportunity for public comment on whatever plan we're doing. And I think depending upon how the town manager is thinking and some of the decisions you make goes, we're either going to present um, a proposal and then seek input, or we're going to present, um, you know, hear the options and, and, and get feedback on that. In particular, I'm really interested in what town meeting members and finance committee, um, uh, capital planning committee, people think about the plans we're doing, but at the same time, I'm very interested in any uh, feedback that we have. So that's really one of the things that I, when I was trying to encourage the creation of uh, doing this process, that public meeting, and I, I know that everyone yep. at the meeting uh, we had was in favor of that, but I just wanted to yeah, bring that one up with, in, with uh, emphasis. Um, yes, Ms. Mill, please. Um, first, I want to say thank you to the working group. I think we've certainly covered all the universes that we need to cover. Um, the Board of Selectmen right now, individually or as a whole, um, has no specified use or anything. Everything is on the table right now. Um, I, I want to commend town manager, and I think it was you, Mr. Dunn, um, that we have our former Veterans Affair Director, Bill Yorker McCarthy. Mm -hmm. When he was a little kid, he, he was from New York. I'll take Yorker. Um, because I think he's a good, true story, a good ambassador uh, in terms of if there is a, any transition or um, redirection. I, I have heard, you know, different things um, from the town manager, um, and we're certainly exploring all possibilities, and we haven't eliminated any. Um, and having uh, town council there also is ex extremely beneficial, um, just in light of the current status and, and how that needs to be monitored and implemented, as well as um, how we move forward. So thank you to the committee, and um, I anticipate further updates. Yep. Um, so uh, I really liked Mr. Dunn's idea about um, having kind of an open forum on this. As it is an, an important discussion for the town, um, and I look forward to hearing that feedback. Um, uh, more, more importantly, I, I do want to thank um, publicly uh, Mr. Curley and Force Yellow for their many, many years of service and dedication to the DAV. Um, I, I, I'm sure that it, it would have um, closed many years ago without their dedication and support in them. You know, they've been very active in the community for an awful long time, and uh, that, sir, I don't want that to be overlooked. And um, they, they are, they've been involved. You know, I remember, I guess, you know, relatively not that long ago, playing Little League, and there was always a DAV team. Mm. And uh, walking through, you still saw all their pictures on the wall. And they, um, for many years, they were an asset to the community. And um, I just want to thank them, and especially Mr. Curley and Force Yellow, for, um, for their years of service. And, um, I look forward to seeing what the working group has to come up with. Um, so I guess we'll move proceed on this as well, if that's okay. Move receipt. Second. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? One nothing. Um, new business. I just want you to put in your calendar. Um, we're going to have the reception for the salon. June 9th, you said? Yes. Thank you. Do you know what day of the week that is off the top it's of your head? It's Monday. It's Monday. It's oh, it is a Monday call. Oh, okay. Thank you. Five to seven before the meeting. Okay. Okay. I have two small pieces of new business. Um, the first is an update for the board. Um, as the board may recall, we had an issue um, a little while ago where a uh, dangerous dog had been impermissibly moved into the town. Um, we were able to successfully go to uh, the Middlesex Court to get an order to have the dog uh, move back to the uh, town of its origin, if you will. So that situation has been resolved. Um, the second thing I wanted to uh, uh, highlight very briefly for the board was the excellent work of workers' compensation and benefit attorney Ed Marlanga. Um, throughout the um, transition process, but also afterwards, on the uh, Boris Coughlin matter, um, principally in uh, working to uh, very effectively and efficiently represent the town's interests. Um, he did a really, really terrific job, and it resulted in a wonderful uh, um, representation for the town, especially during the period when, between Ms. Wright's and uh, uh, when, I, when I started working as town council. Thank you. Yes. Could I on that? Uh, I, I want to echo Attorney Himes' um, sentiments regarding Attorney Malinga. Um, I know at the end everybody saw the bill, but um, I was informed of uh, Herculean efforts that Attorney Malinga had dealing with all the various counsel when it came 
end of the day, time to pay up. And he really negotiated um, professionally and actively to um, talk to all different town council, which dealing with more than one town, one council sometimes is difficult. And I think he had five, six, or seven. And getting to, you know, he participated in a lot of negotiations that yeah. did save the town um, a, a substantial amount of money. And um, sometimes people just see the end number. Um, I did want to highlight that um, I definitely appreciated having his service to us um, on that matter. And he certainly went above ab board and um, just again echoing what Doug was saying about Ed. I'll make sure to relay that to him. I'm sure he'd appreciate it very much. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I echo the same thing as well, working closely with Ed uh, during the interim period again and, and then during Doug's transitional period. Uh, Attorney Marlenga was exceptional. If there was a more uh, a stronger Greek god or, than Hercules. I'd, I'd, I'd use a term to <laughs> surpass Hercules, but uh, yeah, I, I echo. I, I think I that's echo Zeus, this. Mr. Manager. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Zeusian efforts. Uh, and then two other pieces of new business. Uh, I believe it was last week um, uh, I left early to go back down to town meeting, but the board referred to me a matter uh, in regards to Cleveland Street uh, that had two separate but related issues. One was illegal left turns being made on the Cleveland Street from Broadway. Uh, during the prohibited hours in the morning, and then just the general volume of large trucks using Cleveland Street during the day. Uh, so I spoke with the police chief about those issues. Uh, the chief is going to issue some targeted enforcement uh, for the left turn violations. Uh, enforcing there should be able to uh, achieve um, the, the woman who wrote the, the email's uh, goal of having those turns not take place in the morning. But prohibiting truck traffic during the day is a much uh, tougher bar to reach. Uh, that's governed by MassDOT. It's a complex and somewhat high standard to reach. So I do plan on having further conversations with the Chief of Police about that uh, to see if there is any possibility, uh, but I think it would be a much tougher thing for us to promise uh, success or action on. Uh, the other issue that I believe was referred to me last week was um, concerns some residents had raised in regards to the town garden. Uh, the main issue I see in the town garden is uh, the remnants of the wall project, the library wall project from last year that have yet to be cleaned up. So I'm working with the planning director and the deputy town manager who have been focused on that to get a very firm schedule for when that's going to get out of there. Because walking through there, I completely agree. It, it needs to go. It's an eyesore. Uh, so I'll be providing the board with a timeline once I have a timeline. Uh, also, I, I believe there were concerns raised about the gate entering from Maple Street near the Whittemore Robbins houses, uh, as well as the uh, reflecting pool. I know there's been a plan for a long time, uh, a plan in search of funding to repair the, uh, repair the reflecting pool. So I need to do more research into that. And I'll also be looking into what might be able to be done with the gate. Uh, so that's firmly on my plate, and I hope to have more information for the board uh, as I research it. Thank you. Yes. Two questions. Um, I, I do know that two of the individuals, two of the six that came in, and they were actively, and I'm going to follow up with them, um, exploring the possibility of doing a friends group. Normally in the past when it's been a friends group, it's gone through Parks and Rec. But I assume since it's is the town garden, garden, or am I incorrect, that if they do want to formulate that, they should contact you, the town manager's office, or is it Park, Parks and Rec? I, I would think they should start with me, and then we can coordinate with the board. Okay. And I'm going to follow up with the gentleman and um, Mrs. Lane, because um, her son and my brother are best friends for many years. So if that's definitely a go, I, I will send them to, to you. And then um, what was the other thing you talked about? Marathon Street, Cleveland. Oh, I'll, I'll remember the question and call you tomorrow. Thank you. Um, well, let's start down here. Uh, just one thing, uh, remind everyone, uh, maybe you did it at the beginning of the meeting, Memorial Day Parade is on Monday. It's at uh, 9.30 and it goes from, I'm pretty, it's from Walgreens up uh, to uh, Arlington Center and then down through the cemetery with a number of stops at the different war memorials. Um, I will be in town and I'll be there, so I don't know if uh, anyone, uh, uh, but um, I look forward to it. It's a great event. Thank you. I unfortunately will not be in town, so I can't make that, but uh, the Audison Middle School does have a tradition every year of doing a Memorial Day um, reserve, so I'm going to try to be up there on uh, Friday. My, my daughter's playing in the band, among other things. I've been hearing it's a grand old flag over and over and over for many weeks now, so I have to go see it in person. Uh, I just want to note that uh, I think uh, summer is in the air, and it's not just because my allergies are killing me. I'm just going through what our agenda had tonight, again, I mean, we approved the Greek Festival, we approved the Feast of the East, we approved a Moonlight Beach Party, outside furniture for eating your ice cream, um, two public art 
projects that'll be happening this, this summer, the summer concert series as a chamber, and um, taking some steps on looking at uh, bikeway improvements, which uh, I think speaks to the vitality in, in the town. I, I don't think I mentioned that I was, um, I was approached uh, a little while ago by a grad student who's actually doing her th master's thesis on Arlington and the cultural vitality of, of this town. And um, I think just the, tonight's agenda speaks to that. And I want to just give my colleagues a heads up that, um, as I mentioned, the Summer Arts Block Party is coming around again, the second annual on July um, 12th, I believe. Um, and so I expect that'll be on the agenda the next meeting, so some of the same approvals that we requested last year through, through ATED. Um, we might have to adjust it a little bit because the uh, fire station headquarters is uh, gonna be under construction at that time, but I think we have some ways to, to accommodate it. So uh, fun times in A-Town. <laughs> yes, Barry, thank you for your leadership on that. Ms. Mahan. Um, just a few things. I did receive a piece of co correspondence um, from Fred Lasky's office, and it was only sent to me because I was chair at the time. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pass that piece of correspondence oh. they were requesting. You got it to it. I want to make sure I'm passing it on yeah. to you, though, because <laughs> I'm oh, not no chair worries. anymore. That's me because oh. they have a request if the chair um, could attend the event as, as they cited. Uh, the other thing is, I want to ask Mrs. Kropelka just where in our June or July meeting we're going to talk about some possible proposals for hackney and alcohol license. I know when we um, get all alcohol and things like that, we get a copy of tips and safe serve. Um, but this is the first time in my memory that requests for one day um, alcohol licenses, they did include the tips card, which I think is a good idea. So I don't know if that's something we've implemented in the selectman's office. If it's not, I'd like to put that as a proposal for the full board to discuss. Is that something we asked for or did they volunteer? But what I'm saying is we haven't codified, we haven't made this a requirement. I think it's a good requirement to have, because it's kind of in concert with what we do with the, you know, all alcohol on the one day. But that would be for the full board to discuss. So if we can just put that when we, when we discuss that meeting. Um, the other thing was, spoke about that. Um, I saw that we got the communication from Chief Ryan regarding the uh, state accreditation assessment. Um, I anticipate we're going to come out a plus plus plus, but um, I also know it's there's an awful lot of work that's been going on for that, as well as will come culminate on May 29th. I know the town manager will let us know about that. Um, I just want to make sure that um, the Commission on Disabilities, if they don't already, because once again the DPW has provided us with a great release regarding um, where they're going to be installing quite a few handicap ramp um, sidewalk access. Can we just make sure, you know, because this board and the town manager, do they already have so it? So Mike uh, Rademacher attends all Commission on Disability meetings, so, so he aware. liaises with them. Okay. And then the only other thing, um, the correspondence we received from um, um, HUD, or DHCD, regarding um, the building inspector um, being contacted regarding, am I correct, this is sort of the uh, exercise to go through for that ever-changing, once we hit that certain percentage, then we'll have a little bit more control on any possible 40 Bs. Is that something that is in line with that? The, uh, I, I would leave that with the town manager. Yeah, let me, uh, let me confirm that. I, I think it's related. It's not the whole story, but let me, uh, let me figure out how, how it's related. I'm just taking advantage of, of this. I'm not asking for anyone to do any extra work, but if that's part and parcel to getting to that, as well as when the town manager thinks it's appropriate, I know John Belskis really feels um, we're at the number we need to be at so that redevelopment board has a little more authority. Um, when you and or um, the planning director think it's appropriate um, to, whether it's in a month or six months, I, I'd just be curious if we're not close, you know, it seems like, and I'm not saying in a negative way, but I'd like to know if and when, I'd rather just say when we yeah. do hit that target, um, yep. just in talking with John Belskis. And I think that was it. Great, thank you. Um, the only thing I have is that we, I'd like to thank um, Adam Kurowski for all of his work on our electronic packets. Um, he, uh, we had a presentation um, last week of three vendors um, with myself, um, Mary Ann from our office, 
uh, Mr. Hayner of the school committee and Mrs. Fitzgerald also um, over at the school committee. And um, I, I was really blown away by the presentations. Um, one thing that I think is important to note is that it's, um, at least my philosophy is, of course, you know, we, we will be using it, but it will be our staff that uses it primarily. You know, I think it will be like a 90% they use it, 10% we use it. And uh, so I, I'm really looking for, um, and looking forward to seeing their input. I know that um, Ms. Kurowski set up a few trials um, for them to get used to the system, see what they're comfortable with before moving forward. Um, that's really the only update I have on it right now, but I think that it will start moving very quickly. And uh, that's something we can all look forward to. Um, oh, were you done? Sorry. Yes. Before I move to adjourn, I just want to tell my colleagues I took on the onerous task of retrieving our recycling bin. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is back where it belongs. <laughs> and with that, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Soon, let me, hopefully, we don't need it anymore at all. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Second. All those in favor? Aye.